So if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I have my personal PC that I call Nero. And if you've seen my previous PC update project, well, you'll see that it has a 6850K. Well, since then, it's actually gone through two 6850Ks that died on my motherboard, which is the ASUS X99MWS. Simply because that thing just sets like CPU killing voltages if you set XMP profile. I don't know what's up with that, but I just stopped using XMP and my third 6850K has been fine. In fact, that thing, which I can bring up here, this thing, which I've taken out already, is running at pretty good clock speeds and voltages at 4.7 GHz on one core and 4.6 on another and 4.5 on the rest. So this is actually quite a golden 6850K. And I'm actually selling this, so if anyone's interested, it's listed on eBay. I'll, I might just leave a link on the description or something if you want it. Uh, but yeah, I also recently then upgraded to the 6950X, which, you know, this is a pretty beastly processor steal. Uh, I mean, this is like the last gen because right now it's a 7000 series for HEDT, which is Skylake or 6th gen uh, processors. Well, this one is the 6th gen HEDT, which is basically 5th gen processor because it's Broadwell E. And yeah, it, it's still quite powerful. It's still 10 cores. And, you know, I got this at a really insane price. Like, I got this through my friend, Mr. Computer Solutions, who got the processor from Bimbox PC because they had some. Uh, like stock lying around that they didn't use so they decided to sell this one pretty cheap to me like actually extremely cheap to me like basically half the price of what you'll find on eBay right now so I'm really thankful to them so just a shout out to those guys they're system builders so if you're looking to build like great PCs and you're looking for someone to build it for you you might just contact one of those guys they really do know what they're doing and they even overclock for you if you request for it anyways the 6950X uh, it's a 10 core, 25 megs of cache, so that's way more than this 15 megs of cache on the 6850K, and four more cores, obviously, so 20 threads, and it has a really nice box. <laughs> you can see this. It's actually a hard, uh, like hard cover box instead of the typical Intel cardboard box that you'll see on other processors, like the 6850K processor box, for example. This one feels really cheap. This one feels much more premium. Plus that matte black and gold. Uh, writing on the front really looks nice but that's just the beginning of this processor so let's see the, about my installation process to my PC and then we can talk about the performance afterwards
So, now for the performance benchmarks, I have already overclocked the 6950X as well as the 6850K. Because I run these things at overclock settings, I decided to test it at overclock and don't bother with stock at all because I never use stock settings anyways. And I'll be taking a look at the Cinebench and also 3D Mark benchmarks and also After Effects and Premiere Pro which is my real world benchmarks. And so, for the 6950X, I managed an overclock of 4.3 GHz on 3 cores, 4.4 GHz on 4 cores, and 4.5 GHz on 3 of the cores. So I used per core tuning options on the BIOS to overclock each core as high as possible, and that's my maximum. And I also got it to 3.2 GHz on the uncore frequency, so it's pretty good results for a 10 core. Besides the power consumption is getting pretty high already at like 260 watts on some stress testing so I don't think I can go much higher on this anyways besides I tried using higher voltages it just wouldn't budge at higher clock speeds anyways seems like this thing is just average or maybe a little bit above average compared to other 6950X's and for the 6850K that I had uh, it was clocked to 4.4 GHz on 4 cores 4.5 GHz I mean 4.5 GHz on 4 cores, sorry, and one core is at 4.6 GHz and another core is at 4.7 GHz. And also, because these things are Broadwell E, it has the Turbo Boost 3.0 technology, which means that single-threaded tasks will always get pinned to the highest clock speed cores to get maximum single core performance. And that's why on the Cinebench points, you can see that a single core performance on these things, this thing does uh, like beat this one out a little bit because simply the highest clock speed one core is at 4.7 gigahertz compared to just 4.5 gigahertz on the 6950X but I think the higher megabytes of L3 cache helps it a little bit on the 6950X that's why it wasn't so far behind the 6850K even though it's 200 megahertz slower on a clock speed but anyway on the multi-threaded task though obviously this thing wins by a lot and now for the 3D Mark benchmarks because they're mostly graphics reliant like they're more heavy to the graphics side of things they're not a lot higher on the 6950X even though it does get boosted on the physics score on 3D Mark Firestrike and Time Spy as well and you can see that even though the physics test uses a lot of cores it's still not as perfect scaling as Cinebench either because Cinebench is literally perfect core scaling it's just rendering you can slice it up to a lot of cores really easily to make a lot of threads and fill the CPU 100% all the time unlike other tasks like physics on 3D Mark Firestrike for example. And now for the rendering benchmarks, you can see that it is actually quite some improvement. It's not a huge improvement, so if I were to say that, if you were to ask me if it's worth it on the normal price on used market right now, this thing, 6950X is about $700 to $800 compared to this thing which is about $200 to $300. I wouldn't say it's worth it to get the 6950X because the difference in rendering performance on After Effects and Premiere Pro is not that big to warrant like twice or basically more than twice the price on the 6950X. But since I got this really cheap, I basically got it the same price as a used 6850K really. And because of that, it's totally worth it to me. And I'm still quite satisfied with the gains I got. So yeah, that's pretty good gains from just upgrading the CPU and still using an AMD Radeon RX 580, well two of them. So you can see that it does gain quite some render times from just 4 extra cores. So that's pretty good news to me, but it's not anything earth shattering either. But anyways, I'm still really happy about it because it's really awesome. I get a 10 core and I get the fastest CPU on X99. And I mean 10 cores, I wouldn't need to upgrade in a few years. So I'm quite satisfied with this upgrade. I think that I will be really happy to use this for years to come because I don't think I'll need to upgrade anytime soon unless the mainstream desktop starts getting 10 cores as well. But anyways, um, that's it for this video. I think the 6950X is really cool and Extreme Edition processors are really cool as well. Although I wish they started calling this an i9 way earlier when they started launching the 10 core because i9 sounds cooler than i7. I mean i7 gets shared with like mobile laptop processors that's called i7 too so yeah you should have called this i9 really anyways that's it for this video thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video and found it interesting to see my upgrade especially for this thing being so cheap 
But yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you do, please leave a like on the video and please click subscribe to see more of my future videos as well. Thanks for watching. Thank you.